So let me do the writing now of the shell script. Again clearing the screen. In Unix you have to know VI which is like the notepad of Windows to write anything in a file. So I'm going to write a shell script called as uh, called as uh, let's say Unix 1.sh. The name of the shell script usually ends with the .sh. It is not mandatory. You can type any extension but usually it is .sh. If it's a shell script written in K shell it is usually Unix 1.ksh. Since we are writing bash shell scripts it is going to be .sh. So this is my new file. The very first line in a shell script is always going to be the name of your shell but it is followed actually the name of the shell uh, uh, is, is uh, written after you write the hash sign and the exclamation mark. This is not a comment. Anything that starts with a comment, this is a comment. You can write as many comments as you like but every time you have to put this is another comment. So there is no C programming type uh, comments here. Everything has to start with a hash but this is not a comment. The first line is not a comment. It is actually the name of the shell. It is the name of the interpreter which is going to act as a middleman between this shell script and the kernel. So we are writing the shell script in our bash shell. So I can say this is my first shell script. F I R S T shell script uh, written in bash shell. This is my first shell script written in bash shell. Uh, I hope you are able to see all this stuff here that I'm writing. And now let us write this thing. I'm gonna clear the screen. This is the Unix command. So what is a shell script? A shell script is I'm gonna write it. shell script is a list of Unix commands written in a file or it written in a text file. That is the simplest way of writing a shell script. So I'm gonna write a command clear then I'm gonna write a command uh, echo. I'm gonna just print line and then I'm gonna copy that and in the middle I'm gonna say hello hello world so this is my first shell script and I'm gonna save this it's only four lines of shell scripting and I'm gonna save this thing and I'm gonna run this there are multiple ways to run the shell script again I will not go into the details uh, but here is how you should do it the best way is this if I type the command ls-l unix 1.sh it's gonna show me that this is the name of the file that I have just created it was created or last modified on this date. The owner of the file is shaker and these are the permissions. As you can see, there is no execute permission. There is only read and write, read and write and read permission. In order to execute a shell script, Unix 1.sh, you need to change the permission with the help of the chmod command and user plus x. That means I'm giving user plus means to give the permission, x means the execute permission which is the file unix 1.sh and now if you will see the permissions you will see an x over here for the user, user means the owner so shaker is the user who has created the file, he is the owner of the file and now he can execute the shell script because of this x because of this x so let me execute the shell script now when you execute the shell script you have to put the full path or the relative path the full path means the full name of the file. So in this case it's going to be home shaker unix 1.sh and I'm going to hit enter now then at this time all those four commands that we have written inside that shell script will get executed as you can see the screen was cleared then this is the output of the first echo command then uh, this is the output of the second echo command and this dotted line is the output of the oh 
Oh, come on. Okay. Of the third echo command. So this is the first shell script that we have written. Let me just show you that script by catting it. Unix one dot sh. This is our first shell script. Okay. Now we will try to write another shell script. Now before we write additional shell scripts, I would like to introduce a concept of variables. Okay, so we're going to talk about what is called as variables. Now variables are there for all programming languages. They usually have data types and they usually have a certain length but in Unix there are no data types and no minimal lengths for your variables this makes our job very simple we don't have to declare the variables also data types are always strings there is only one data type in Unix which is a string and that's why I say there are no data types actually there is only string data type and everything is treated as a string so let us now see how variables are assigned so there is a variable a now and I'm assigning a value of shaker to it. So this is how we do it. A is equal to shaker and let's say B is equal to my last name is this is my last name Tulsi Bagwale. So now what I have done here I have assigned a value of shaker to variable A and I have assigned a value of Tulsi Bagwale to variable B. So these two variables are now created. I did not declare them I did not declare they were strings and I did not declare how much of the length was there for those variables. Now if I want to see what is inside that variable, usually you print the value of the variable. In normal programming language, you will print it like this. If I say echo A, then it's not going to show me actually, just see what the output is going to look like. Echo A is just going to print A. So this is not how you see what is inside a variable. You say echo dollar A. You have to proceed the variable with the dollar sign. So dollar A is going to show you what is inside variable A and echo dollar B is going to show you what is inside variable B. And now I can create variable C which is the concatenation of these two variables. That is dollar A and dollar B. And then you will see echo dollar C is going to show me my full name. It was concatenated. You can keep on adding spaces in the middle <clears throat> and when you start adding spaces then the quotes, the single quotes, double quotes, they all will come into the picture. Then space and then double quotes complete. This is how you can put spaces in between the two variables in the concatenation. So these are like the two ways to assign uh, or the way to assign a value to a variable. Value to a variable. This is the value to a variable. Okay. Now with the help of this we are going to proceed further and we are going to now jump into our next command which is the read command. The read command is going to actually read the or take the input from the user. So this is how the command works. Read minus P minus P stands for printing and it's going to say what is your name and then it's going to type the name of the variable is let's say nm. So when you type this command, read command will print this, this message on the screen and then it will wait for your input. So actually it is doing two things. It is going to printing something on the screen and it is going to wait for the input and whatever you type will be stored in the variable nm. So let me just run this command. See as it printed on the screen, what is your name? I'm going to type my name as shaker and then you will see that shaker is the value that has been now assigned or that has been put into variable nm. So let me show that to you echo dollar nm. So this is how the input is asked to the user. So with the help of the read command and the echo command let us write the next shell script now which is unix1 now unix2 dot sh Again, this is going to be a bash shell script, bin bash, and uh, again a comment, this is 
a shell script to ask user his input his or her input so input so now here is the thing read minus p now I can use single quotes or double quotes at this time I don't want to go into the details of what is the difference between single quotes double quotes or, or no quotes and all that stuff right now we will just stick to double quotes uh, they can be used interchangeably in, in certain situations but uh, not in all situations so here I will use double quotes what is your name and then again the variable is nm and then I'm gonna say echo hello dollar n m okay and I, I need to change the name of the variable nm or I can use any variable there any name hello nm then a comma how are you so this is my shell script to ask user his input and now again I'm gonna run it now this time I will show you another method of running a shell script instead of changing the permissions and, and uh, using the chmod command because as you can see now unix star dot sh will show us two shell script the first one is green because it has an execute permission uh, and the second one does not have the execute permission so how do you uh, actually run a shell script without giving an execute permission uh, here is how you can type it bash unix2 dot sh and now the shell script will be executed it is asking me what is your name I'm gonna say my name is shaker it's gonna say hello shaker how are you so this is how you can write an interacting or interactive shell script you can take any input from a user and you can go ahead with that now with this knowledge let us write a little